listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another full edition of the Narrative Podcast. And I am your host, Halsey Allen. Welcome to the Narrative Podcast. The Narrative Podcast is the home of original people, peace, reciprocity, and positivity. Welcome all my narrators, welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Welcome everybody new, unfamiliar with me or my platform. Welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Looking forward to you becoming a part of the family, the narrator family. So here we are, another Saturday. Just got through, most of y'all, I don't. But for the ones that do celebrate, you know, the turkey day. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so we I just got through uh, celebrating a uh, turkey day. Um. I'm going to talk some more about that later on. I don't want to give a spoiler, but, you know, that's going to be a part of this segment later on in this broadcast. But, um, yeah, for the ones that did celebrate Thanksgiving, did you have a nice Thanksgiving? You enjoy your uh, dinner and company and everything. And then now that you've cooked that ginormous meal, what do you intend on doing with the leftovers? Do you intend on, uh, you know, giving it back to some people that could actually use a good hot meal? Or are you going to just, you know, walk and eat as much as you can possibly walk and eat and end up letting the uh, rest of the food go to waste and you have to throw it out in a couple weeks or a couple days? Because Turkey Day was what on a, uh, a Friday. And here we are Saturday. Thursday or Friday, but, you know, it doesn't keep for long. You shouldn't be trying to keep it for a, uh, a week. And then it's crazy because, like, for the people to celebrate those <laughs> calendar meals, you're going to buy the exact same food for the Christmas dinner, the exact same food for the Easter dinner. Everything that you made on uh, Thanksgiving, you're going to make it on uh, Christmas, and then you're going to make it on um, Easter. So, I don't know. But I just, you know, pray that you're not going to let all that food go to waste, that you're going to, you know, give it back to the homeless or less unfortunate, disenfranchised, or it could be like, you know, charity starts at home. I'm pretty sure you got relatives, blood related relatives that ain't eating so good. Within our culture, we be tripping about people taking plates home. And if they don't, you just end up throwing it all away anyway. So I don't I don't get that sometimes. I don't get I don't get it sometimes. But um anyway, welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Uh, all my narrators, they already know the demonstration. They already know what my podcast and platform is all about. Um, but for those unfamiliar with my platform, I'm going to give you a brief overview of, you know, the content before diving into the content. I'm going to just walk you through what the uh, narrative podcast is all about and di- dive straight on into the um, content. So let's start at the top tippy, the name, the narrative podcast. I name my podcast the narrative podcast as I don't like the false narrative that the media weaves about original people and original culture. Uh, meaning, I don't like these, you know, negative stigmas and stereotypes that they play up about our people and within our culture. So they got us looking like real negative, real degenerate. Um, really unintelligent, um, hostile, lazy, 
you know, the usual suspects when it comes to discussing original people, our people. So I decided to construct a platform where I was going to, where I am highlighting our strengths and, uh, you know, displaying us at our uh, best instead of, you know, uh, showing us at our worst or telling, as the case may be, because it's an audio platform about, you know, us in the worst possible light. So I'm just trying to, you know, everything about this platform, I'm uh, telling up telling it from the perspective of where kings and queens, gods and goddesses of the universe, um, big, big contributors to this thing called humanity that we, you know, make the world go around and contribute a lot, a lot to the life force here on this little planet we call Earth. Um, so some other things about the narrative podcast. So, um, in addition to that, it is my mission statement to bring awareness to all my listeners of how important it is and why it is important for us to share positive content on our platforms about our people and our culture, um, especially original people, um, I just want to bring awareness to that, inspire and motivate people to do the same thing I'm doing here on the Narrative Podcast. Um, Matter of fact, I think that's a perfect segue for my tagline, the Narrative Podcast, changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative stereotypes about original people and original culture. How do I destroy the negative stereotypes about our people and our culture? by providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. Changing the narrative about how our people and our culture is perceived, hence the title, The Narrative Podcast. So yeah, so I'm bringing, uh, that's what this entire platform is dedicated to, is bringing and shedding the light bringing awareness about why it's so important to, uh, you know, utilize your uh, platforms responsibly when it comes to sharing information about our people and our culture. Um, Because the media, you know, they're a big propaganda machine ran by the powers that be. They want to distort the image and the likeness of anyone who isn't of the higher echelon. And the higher echelon is wealthy white people. So anybody that's not wealthy and white through the eyes of the media, they're going to get portrayed as, you know, low-lifed, degenerate, um, criminalistic, um, low in morals, low in intelligence, hostile, aggressive, lazy, the whole nine. Um, They do this to all classes of people. Everybody that's not, you know, wealthy and Caucasian. But out of all the people that they do it to, they do it to us, our people, original people. And the reason why they do it to us is because they're aware of their history and then they're aware of ours. And their biggest fear is that once we, as a people, realize our worth, stop fighting each other, start unifying, that we will, you know, reclaim our rightful place in the world overthrow their, you know, oppressive regimes and do to them what they've done and are currently doing to us. 
especially here in the United States. But it's an ill-gotten fear because that is not the nature of our people. You know, we don't have a history of um, oppressing people. We don't have a history of forcing our uh, beliefs and values on somebody else. We don't have a history of rewriting history, making us the heroes and, er and vilifying everybody else. We don't, uh, you know, we don't got a history of that. That's them, <laughs> and they know it. But um, anyway, yeah, so the whole purpose of the Narrative Podcast is to, you know, bring awareness of why it's so important to share positive uh, content on your uh, platforms about original people and original culture. So I want to instruct people, you know, or like motivate people to share the type of uh, content that I share on my platform and the type of content I share here on the narrative podcast is positive content. You know, I'm showing, I'm tell, I'm providing content, you know, about positivity within our community, about leadership, entrepreneurship, um, family structure, um, networking, um, intelligence, uh, excellence, you know, inspiring, motivational stories of perseverance, us triumphing in the face of adversity, um, us winning, basically, instead of always disenfranchised, destitute, um, living well below our means, I mean, well below the poverty level. So, you know, that's how we're going to change the narrative about how our people and our culture is perceived. Um, because, you know, we're living in the digital information age, and that's how, you know, we look at everybody as a society through what we're posting online. That's your carbon footprint to the world, to the entire world. You know, what you're posting online. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, it seems kind of unfair at times, but um, people associate you as a person by what you're posting online. And what I mean by that is your hobbies, your beliefs, um, your value systems, um, you know, your upbringing, you know, every, all the misnomers of your country, uh, of your culture, of your faith, um, you know, your viewpoint, your perspective in life, all that's, you know, based on the type of content that you're posting online. People, you know, take you at that about whatever you're posting, like, oh, they're into that, they're into that, they represent this and they must be that way. So, having all, said all that, just imagine us, how we look as a people to, you know, people outside of our culture, people that have been provided nothing but negative frames of reference about our people and our culture. Just imagine how we look, you know, feeding into these negative stereotypes and stigmas placed over us by the media by, you know, playing up gang culture, pimp culture, whore culture, um, drug culture, you know, just how we look feeding into that by, you know, redistributing and um, recycling it online. Because as I said, the media intentionally puts out positive, fr uh, negative frames of reference about our people and our culture. And people outside of our culture never been around none of us, never went to school with any of us. They only know us, um, you know, their experience with us is what they see on television, what they see in movies, uh, what they hear in the music, what they're reading in books and magazines, and all of that stuff is negative. So it's up to us to, uh, you know, change the narrative by posting positive content. This is why I call my target audience my narrators, because like I said, we're living in the... Uh, 
digital information age. So the plot uh, positive, uh, the silver lining on that cloud is we can control the narrative because um, we, we're in the unique position to illustrate, tell, or narrate our stories. And what I mean by that, you know, you decide how you're perceived on your timeline or on your platform simply by what you're posting online. You, you can control the shots. We can control it in that aspect, in that arena. We can control, we, we can control what we post online. We can't control, you know, the machine with their posting online, but we can control our own content. We don't have to play the game. So, um, what this platform isn't about, I'm not trying to, you know, convince people outside of our culture that we're not so bad. I'm not even looking uh, to, you know, gain favor or gain acceptance or, you know, validation from people outside of our culture. This is, like I said, you know, stories being told about us. And the, and the story is inaccurate and false. They're, you know, falsely using our uh, images and likenesses to tell um, an untrue story. And the story that they want to keep on perpetuating and the recycling is that we're, you know, low life degenerates, that we're violent, that we're lazy, that we're unintelligent, that we can't, you know, communicate properly that we can't get along that we can't cohabitate peacefully with one another that we're just all about the drama all about the complaining all about the violence so you know this is about just telling our story right that's what it, this um, podcast is about just telling our story the correct way, that we're kings and queens, guys and goddesses of the universe. Um, not saying we're better than anybody, but we definitely was first. And, you know, that's a perfect segue to my next point. I refer to our people as original people versus black. And the reason why I do that is because I believe that describes us more accurately as a people as opposed to the uh, word black. Now, I'm not ashamed of being black. I'm not going to get into no philosophical debate because for like, you know, scholars that think of eight million reasons why we should call ourselves black, what black infers and what it means. And then I can think of like, and there's other people that share the same viewpoint as me they can think a nine million reasons why we shouldn't refer to ourselves as black or say the word black in reference to our people. But not getting in, into all that, I just feel, matter of fact, I know that is historically accurate, meaning we were and are the original blueprint. We was here first and um, all other civilizations um, all other cultures was modeled after us. We was here first on this planet. Um, we inhabited every corner of the globe originally. And contrary to our unpopular belief, we did not get there via slave boats. We was already indigenously located in all these different geographic locations here on this planet. And then sidebar, the ge uh, geographical formation of the world has changed several different times over, you know, since the uh, creation, since the beginning of time. So, said all that to say, like, you know, original people, like, our origins, is, like, has shifted. So we, we can debate where the original 
place we call Africa really was. But um, more to the point is, you know, original, you know, is more accurate in terms of time. Like we was here first. Um, original also denotes, um, you know, our intellect because we originated pretty much every modern day convenience you can think of, you can trace it back to our civilization, anything in the world that makes, you know, living easier and more convenient, it can be linked and traced back to us. We probably invented it. And then somebody just took a spin off of something that we already created. Um, also, referring to ourselves as original people, um, it helps to unify us because people outside of our culture, they just all lump us into one box anyway. Because there are so many different types of us hailing from so many different types of land masses, um, believing in so many different um, ideologies, religions, um, philosophies, having different perspectives and viewpoints and upbringings and uh, cultural and ethnic up, uh, backgrounds. But the one thing that we all have in common as original people, we can all trace our lineage back to the original origin point for all mankind. And that's why I feel it's more important or why it's more, you know, accurate to refer to our people as original people versus black. And that's what I constantly try to do here on my platform. Like any time opportunity that I can uh, get, seize, I will refer to our people as original people versus black. If you want to call yourself black, you know, I'm not telling you not to not call yourself black. If you don't, you know, feel no type of way about it and, you know, content with calling you, referring to yourself as black, then go right on ahead. You know, I'm not like shunning you or looking down my nose at you for doing so. And so I'm respecting the difference. But on my platform, I try to refer to our people as original people versus black. Um, So, some more mis misnomers about the narrative podcast is a time sensitive platform, meaning um, I try to give myself just one um, hour of broadcast time. I try not to exceed uh, one hour. And the purpose of me doing that is so. that I don't um, just ramble and talk and talk and talk. I can cover a lot of subjects um, in a short amount of time and basically to make my content digestible, easy to follow, because it's an audio platform. I need to engage my listeners. I need to keep my listeners um, captivated and attentive in, in the content that I'm sharing. So the best way I can do that that I, that I came up with is just basically keeping the content short and to the point. Um, I just want to be, you know, put the uh, information out there efficiently as possible, make it as easy to digest as possible as people that can keep up. I don't want to shoot over anybody's heads and I also don't want to dumb myself down, but I basically try to just make my content straightforward to the point and um like i said this allowed me to uh, cover a whole lot of uh speaking points in a short amount of time and this also prevent me from uh going down rabbit holes um talking in circles and um not really connecting my points so i have a streamlined um format basically Um, 
Another Miss Norm brought the narrative podcast is this is a positive space for original people, my people. Um, I don't do, I don't endorse, promote, or entertain gossip. Um, I think I know for a fact gossip is destroying our people. Um, we're the only people that you know try to destroy each other online with gossip, like. We've been brainwashed and um, conditioned to believe the only way we're going to um, make money is, you know, talk bad about each other and, you know, air out dirty laundry and drag each other through the mud. And so what I wanted to do is be the example to prove people, you know, we can um, speak highly of one another and if we disagree with something somebody said or something somebody's doing, we can disagree um, civilly in such a way where they don't feel no type of way about us disagreeing. Not resort, resorting to calling each other names and bringing people into the conflict that don't have anything to do with it, like people's mothers and children and, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we're doing online. So this is not the place for all that. Um, I don't indulge in the foolishness and um, I try to discourage against it. Um, so if like I don't have anything against people that uh, do that type of media, do the uh, celebrity gossip and all that, because I'm pretty sure celebrities, if they want people they were rather their own people to profit off of, you know, news about them and what they got going on in their personal lives rather than the uh, mainstream media. So you do have a purpose. I acknowledge your purpose. And I'm not, you know, um, you know, saying you don't have a purpose for being here in, you know, this digital space. But it's not something I do. And, um, I just try to discourage against it. And the only thing I would say to our brothers and sisters that do do that type of media, if you're going to do like the um, celebrity gossip or the celebrity news, um, just try to uh, incorporate positivity somewhere within the broadcast. So, you know, the plot don't get lost and the plot meaning unity. You know, we all fighting the same battle. We're all on the same teams. Just, you know, on on different sides of the fence of it. So, like, you know, we got the activists over here. We got the, you know, the financial people over here. And, like, everybody got a role. Everybody got a position. But, you know, we got one common goal. We got one common um, opposition. So let's not um, make the ops job easier by doing their job for them. And their job is to keep us um, divided. Um, I think I covered just about everything. Um, so yeah, uh, one little smidge that I always share about the media before I, uh, you know, dive into the content. Um, so why the uh, media has an evil, wicked, diabolical agenda, their purpose is to, you know, control us as a form of, you know, psychological warfare. They're controlling the images. They're controlling the information. But through all that, at the core of it, the media is a business, supply and demand. And see, they gather their information based, you know, on the statistical research, what people are, you know, posting online, what people are clicking on online. And they gather all that information and that data, and what they'll do is they'll create products 
to accommodate their statistical findings. So this is why it is so important for us to share positive content on our platforms about our people and our culture. Because this will explain like why we all always come up with these um, crappy television shows, crappy movies, um, depicting us and our likenesses in a negative light. So if we, you know, we show them we're interested in intelligence and learning and culture, um, you know, in leadership, in, in finance, they'll start creating more content to accommodate those interests. But if we always, you know, posting things of, you know, the criminal underworld, showing we're interested in that type of stuff, showing we're interested in violence and, um, you know, that low vibrational stuff, then they're going to keep on churning out that type of content. Because like I said, supply and demand. But um, anyway, I think I covered everything. All the uh, misnomers about my uh, podcast and what to expect. And without any further ado, here we go. On this full edition of the Narrative Podcast, diving into the content. Uh, with my very first, oh wait, well I guess for the format, um, I got uh, my podcast is divided into sections, each section has a speaking point, and I will describe each section as I come to each section, and I already told you the purpose of me doing that is to help keep my content streamlined and time efficient so I'm not just, you know, talking in circles and just, you know, talking and talking and talking because I have to keep you guys captivated, entertained and attentive so it don't go in in one ear and out the other because nobody wants to listen to somebody just talk for hours and hours and hours. That's the reason why I do that. But um, anyway, so kicking things off with the first section of the narrative podcast is... The highlight section. And in the highlight section, what I'm doing is I, or, uh, excuse me, <laughs> I skipped over sections, my bad. My first section of the narrative podcast is the promo section. And in the promo section, what I'm doing is I'm offering original people that own, operate their own business, have their own product or service that need or like promoted the opportunity to hit me up to get that free uh, promotion for whatever they got going on. Um, The reason why I'm doing that is because while we do reparations, most definitely until we receive them, it is up to us to, you know, help ourselves. And we help ourselves by um, patronizing businesses owned and operating, owned and operated by original people. And then also, to promote businesses owned and operated by others so we can all do our parts to help circulate the original people dollar within the original people community so we won't be dependent upon the powers that be or expecting something from them even though they owe us they do owe us a lot like let let that be known they do owe us it's not a handout It's not a loan. It's what's owed to us. But, like I said, until we get it, it's up to us to to do for self. And the best way to do for self is to patronize businesses and promote businesses. And so that's me doing my part is to promote businesses owned and operated by original people. So I'm giving you guys the opportunity to get free promotion on my platform. I do have a following, so you can hit me up, Hawes Gallon at Passion Web Mail at PoeticPassion.host. 
in the subject bar type promo in the body of the email tell me a little bit about yourself um, product service event or whatever you want promoted and I will do my very best to create a quality advertisement for you to promote whatever it is you got going on and the kicker is my price is 110 percent free so you don't have anything to lose you only have something to gain because like i said i'm doing this is me doing my part to help circulate the original people dollar within the original people community by letting my listening audience know about the existing product and the existing product be your business, your service, your event that you want promoted, whatever you got going on that needs promoted. So I'll run it back one more time before diving into the next section. So for the free promotion, if you need it or want it, hit me up at passionwebmail at forwardpassion.host. And in the subject bar type promo and body of the email. Include everything you want me to know about whatever it is you got going on. All right. Very self-explanatory. On to the next section. This section is called the contest section. In this section, uh, what I'm doing is I'm hosting a contest for this platform, the Narrative uh, Podcast. And... With this contest, what I'm doing is I'm offering you a bulk supply of your favorite snack food item for participating in the contest topic. And the contest topic is share your most recent shopping while black experience. Um, The name of the contest is called the Chew On This Contest. Um, So this contest section is basically like incentive slash um, listener participation. I'm trying to engage my listeners to have them in, uh, check to see if they're, you know, paying attention to the content, trying to engage them directly by, you know, talking to them. So, you know, this is a good way for us to uh, communicate with one another as I don't have a hotline yet. And then also to give incentive reward for you to keep listening. And for those unfamiliar with the platform, incentive reward to see what all the fuss is all about. So, you know, you have nothing to lose, only something to gain. Go on and enter the chew on this contest. Um, the contest is completely free to enter. Um, I'm using the exact same email address that I just used for... The uh, promotional section. So if you want to enter the contest, hit me up, Halsey Allen at Passion Webmail at PoeticPassion.host. And in the subject bar, type chew on this slash or dash shopping while black. If you don't want to type the entire word shopping while black, you can type SWB in all caps. Body of the email. Make sure to include your mailing address. Um, Tell me what type of uh, product you want. Um, As a prize, what type of snack food item you want, so I know what to get you. Uh, Then also, of course, make sure you share your most recent shopping while black experience. Very simple. So I'm going to run it back one more time. Before moving on to the uh, next section of the narrative podcast. Um, So once again, to enter the chew on this, uh, to enter the chew on this contest here on the narrative podcast, hit me up at passionwebmail at porticpassion.host. In the subject bar, type chew on this slash or dash. Shopping while black, and if you do not want to type the entire word shopping while black, type SWB in all caps in the body of the email. Make sure to include your mailing address so I know where to send your prize. 
And then tell me what you would like as a prize, what type of snack food item you would like as a prize. And I'll send you a bulk supply of it. So it's not just like a single thing. It's like, you know, the Sam's Club or the Costco get right pack. And then, of course, share your most recent shopping while black experience, because that's the topic of the contest. Um, once again, it's entry is completely free and the purpose of it is just basically incentive reward. That's it and that's all. So I'm going on to the next section of the narrative podcast. Uh, those two sections was actually like the preliminary section, the warm up sections. This here right here is the uh, glue of the narrative podcast. This is technically the main section. This is the highlight section. In this section, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting already existing businesses owned and operated by original people. Um, the purpose of me doing that, um, once again, is just staying true to my uh, mission statement here on the Narrative Podcast, which is to provide positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. So this is me providing positive frames of reference about um, entrepreneurship and the reason why I feel it's necessary to provide positive frames of reference about being an entrepreneur is because we don't have a lot of frames of reference about successful entrepreneurs. Um, the very few uh, frames of reference that we're given about entrepreneurialism comes to us via a rea scripted reality television. And on these scripted reality television shows, what the producers tend to do is they play up dysfunction, toxicity, um, and degeneracy. So they showcase it in a negative light. Because like the participants on these shows, the entrepreneurs on these shows are uh, brothers and sisters earning six figures or better. They have, you know, several businesses under their umbrella several side businesses, several corporate entities linked to their brand. But we never get that in these shows because all the producers want us to see uh, us to see is them behaving badly, um, fighting amongst each other, using uh, narcotics and alcohol on camera and just, you know, Behaving like somebody never attempted to raise them. So they, these are the images they want to feed us about ourselves. I already told you why they do it, but, you know, that's why I'm doing this section is basically to, you know, bypass all that toxicity and degeneracy. And I'm walking you through an entrepreneur's journey. Somebody that decided to start their own business and, um, you know, walk you through their entire journey, the trials and tribulations, how they, you know, came up with the idea, how they funded their businesses, what their businesses, you know, about and who it appeals to and, you know, everything you need to know about it. So in addition to that, some more qualifying factors of the businesses that I highlight on the highlight section of the narrative podcast is that, well, of course, they're owned and operated by original people. Um, they hire their own, they hire other original people to work for them. Um, they do some type of community outreach, some type of community activism, some type of giving back. Um, they either, you know, pay into a nonprofit organization or they have their very own nonprofit organization. They do some type of philanthropy, some type of community activism, um, you know, some types of programs for the community, whether it's like digital literacy, whether it's, you know, uh, 
taking care of our uh, elderly, something for the youth, something for people uh, without um, sufficient uh, shelter, without sufficient food, you know, things of that nature. And then lastly, the last qualifying factor of the uh, businesses that I highlight on the highlight section of the narrative podcast is they align up with my theme. And my current theme is this season of winter. So now that you know what the highlight section is all about, I'm going to dive right on in. So like I said, it is the season of winter, and then also, it also is the holiday season. And so the businesses that I'll be highlighting today on the Narrative Podcast are businesses that cater to something that we're all currently doing, regardless if you believe in it or not. It is the holidays, especially here in the United States. Um, around this time, people are preparing for Christmas. And once again, whether you believe in it or not, whether you celebrate it or not, people are gearing up for Christmas and the season of Christmas and all things associated with it. And one of the most common things associated with Christmas is communication. And how do we communicate during the holidays? Um, We communicate through cards everybody every like Christmas when it gets close to the holidays around Thanksgiving and Christmas what people tend to do is send out holiday greeting cards so the businesses that I will be highlighting today here on the narrative podcast is original people owned and operated greeting card companies. And the very first business I'll be highlighting today, or greeting card business I'll be highlighting today on the Narrative Podcast section is by Miss James. This business was established in 2017 by a sister by the name of Terry James. The address is www.bymissjames.com. Um, Tara is originally from Austin, Texas, currently uh, residing in Panoma, California. Um, before starting her own uh, greeting card company, she had took a, a whole lot of different turns and twists in her career. She started out as a freelance graphic web designer for a design company. Uh, Then a few years after that, she became a a program designer for another uh, tech company. And then she, her last thing before she started her business, she would ended up becoming a, um, a tech liaison for a tech company. Um, so basically she started her, uh, business because she took a trip to the store. She didn't see a lot of, you know, greeting cards that spoke to our people, used our the type of vernacular we use, didn't represent us, you know, nothing, you know, to say, hmm, this is an original people family. So what she would decide to do is uh, to remedy that by starting her own company. Um, and so thus, Miss James was born. And narrators, everybody listening right now, um, in the highlight section, I'm giving you guys the streamlined version of these stories. Uh, they, mo- they are more extensive and have a whole lot more details, but for time's sake, I'm kind of just getting straight to the meat, how they started their company, why they started their company, and some things you need to know about their company. But, um, yeah. 
So basically, that's how established my Miss James was born. Um, so Tara is, uh, she is not, in addition to a businesswoman, she's an idealist. Um, she's an advocate and an activist. Um, she wants to make the world a better place to live in for everybody. So she donates to a whole lot of uh, charitable causes. Um, she says she wants to change the world. Um, so, you know, she's also hosted other um, events to uh, impact and uplift the community. You know, does all ki types of uh, philanthropy and charity. Um, currently, um, she is the only one running her business. She doesn't have anyone working for her, but I'm sure when her business expand she's going to hire people from her community or hire people um, within her own family surely that needs you know a job but that sister is impacting the world with her brand um, you can go there and see you know her collection that she has some really uh Things that speak to the culture, you know, in hip hop culture, we say do it for the culture. When you go to, to her website, you will see just common things we say within our culture and, you know, all kinds of expressions and, and sentiments are translated through her greeting cards about our people. So by supporting that brand, you will be supporting us. So go do that. Go check out By Miss James by Sister Tara Williams. Join me into giving Miss Tara James, I said Williams, <laughs> Miss Tara James a warm narrative podcast round of applause for her greeting card line, Miss James. All right, so for the um, next business that will be highlighting the highlight section here on the Narrative Podcast is a business called Carla Sue. Carla Sue uh, was established by a sister by the name of Cara, Carla Lyles in 2016. Um, the physical address is 129 Aurora Street, Texas, 7709. Now, um, Carla is a local activist and advocate in the area, in the state of Texas. Um, she's been giving back her whole entire life. Uh, she specializes in graphic design and print making. Uh, so basically her whole, you know, demonstration is to impact and empower the youth. Um, she formed a nonprofit organization called Haven or the Haven, excuse me, um, which basically teaches, uh, the youth, um, empowerment through the arts. So, you know, teaching them to use the arts as a positive outlet to express themselves through like fashion, through like um, playing instruments, um, dancing, uh, hip hop, um, you know, just all that creative uh, performer type style art. And then she also launched a movement <clears throat> called uh, Keep Houston Dope. And that happened during uh, 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 when uh, Hurricane Harvey hit. And what that was really about was to, you know, clean, clean, make cleanup efforts to like um, 
you know, clean up the debris during the wake of uh, Hurricane Harvey. But since then, it became a way of life because she didn't stop, you know, after the relief efforts. Um, she went to uh, keep the communities, you know, nice and clean in the streets, nice and clean and graffiti free. And, you know, if anybody ever been to Texas, you know, they're divided into stuff called wards. You don't want it to look like a prison ward. She wants to uh, beautify Texas and have it looking majestic and like people actually live there. <laughs> Not resembling a third world country, but um, yeah, she's just like um, involved in a whole lot of nonprofit organizations and um, giving back um, big time philanthropists. Um, she's doing TED Talks. Um, motiv motivational speaking type engagements. Um, so, her greeting card company is basically centered around expressing yourself, um, uh, giving yourself, a, uh, and by yourself, I mean our people, original people, a positive self image. Because her line is all about empowerment and, you know, family structure and positivity. So that's what she's trying to, um, or what she is, translating in her greeting cards. Um, she got the idea of doing the greeting cards uh, for the same reason the other sister that I just highlighted did. Um, lack of representation, um, lack of choice when shopping for greeting cards. Um, so for that purpose, um, you know, Yeah, so just for uh, through lack of um, representation and lack of avail availability for uh, our images and our likenesses. So she wanted to um, try to inspire people to basically feel good about themselves. And she uh, created a feel good product. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> when you go to her website, she has a uh, keep um, Texas dope apparel, merchandise, she got like furniture, or Keep Houston Dope, I keep on saying Texas, it's Keep, the movement is called Keep Houston Dope, so she got Keep Houston Dope tees and um, onesies for the baby, masks for people still wearing masks, uh, drink koozies, but um, yeah, she has a very vibrant greeting card collection, all kinds of sentiments, uh, things to say, uh, old AF, still cute though in parentheses, so it's like really playful and whimsical, proud of you queen, birthday card, KKK, um, She got the B word, so I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> how to feel about that. Um, here's one for me. This is probably something I would send you, another effing Christmas card. So she got some real like super hood stuff. Um, really kind of uh, funny, humorous stuff. Cuffing season. She got a cuffing season card. Just stuff we say within our culture. Boy, bye. <laughs> a rejection card. Now that's innovative to reject somebody. She got a card that says boy, bye. And I'm pretty sure she got a card, an inverse to that says girl, bye. And then she got a Tupac quote. 
and a woman alive that could take my mama's place for a Mother's Day card. So, you know, she got all kinds of uh, holiday cards, all kinds of uh, expressions. Um, she's a, a philanthropist. She gives back to the community. So when you help this sister out, she will be, it'll be like helping out our community. So, you know, do yourself a favor, do us a favor, do that community of Houston a favor, go support that sister and the Carla Sue brand. Join me in to giving uh, our sister Carla Lyles a warm narrative podcast round of applause for her brand, Carla Sue. And then last but not least, the very last business I'll be highlighting in the highlight section, section of the Narrative Podcast is a brand called Neighborly, and it was established in 2016 by two friends and neighbors, former neighbors, Robin Beck and Carmel Kendall. Now Robin was a writer, is the writer, and uh, Carmel is the illustrator. So Robin writes to uh, what goes on the cards and uh, Carmel puts the picture on the cards. So they got a symbiotic uh, relationship. Um, so the brand culminated it's a play on words. It's called neighborly because they grew up as neighbors, as childhood neighbors. They uh, lived by each other growing up in Fayetteville, Georgia. Um, they went on to college. Carmel went to uh, Study the arts at SCAD College. Um, Robert studied communications at the University of Michigan and Columbia University. Um, then they became neighbors again. They both moved to uh, Harlem in uh, New York City. So initially, before the uh, they started the greeting card company, uh, Robin petitioned uh, Carmel to illustrate for her her because she wanted to write um, children's books. So obviously she didn't decide on she decided against um, writing children's books and went in a whole nother direction. Um, the greeting card company just kind of came about. They was having brainstorming sessions for the children's books and, um, you know, one of them, I believe it was Carmel, suggested uh, maybe greeting cards would be more um, suiting to your writing talents, um, you know, and then thus Neighborly was born. So, yeah. Now, the way they give back is kind of interesting. Um, they basically promote small businesses. That's what their entire brand is dedicated to, to do, is to uh, promote independent businesses, um, all independent businesses, but with the focus on our business, of course, original people. Um, they promote, they host, and um, show up to, you know, pop-ups, for small businesses. Um, and then they also have an internship program for college students who are thinking of becoming, you know, writers or want to get into greeting card business. They can either franchise their own neighborly out or, you know, go on, accumulate the skills working for them to do their own brand, but you know, they're putting out the resources and 
that's what we definitely need to, uh, you know, build the community is, you know, that's their approach to it is, you know, teach. They, they, they're they coming from the perspective of teach me how to fish. And that's what they're doing for our people is teaching them how to fish, teaching them all the aspects of running a greeting card company. And, you know, their brand also is something similar to the other brand. Very uh, charismatic, witty um, sayings. Um, yeah, so they got a very witty approach to the greeting card company. Very similar to the uh, one I just uh, mentioned, uh, Carla Sue. Now, theirs isn't as straightforward. Theirs is a little bit less. You know, I don't want to say it, but I say their brand is a little bit more wholesome than I like. You know, um, they got a, a course every category you can think of: anniversary, baby, holiday, graduation, holiday ones. Let me see what they got going on. Check one check. Two. Yeah, so they got like reindeer zoom call jingle <laughs> balls. Um they got one with Cardi B for the holidays. I'm just reading the holiday ones. Here's a hot holiday card. They just got a picture of Cardi B. Doing her little iconic pose with the, you know, um, like they got some whimsical stuff. Happy Kwanzaa, Felice Navidad, fleece, because it's got a, it's a fleece sweater. So they're accommodating all, everybody. Um, you should really check them out. I think you will be in for a treat. Um, like I said, you know, their entire brand is uh, dedicated to giving back to small business owners, helping small business owners get a uh, start, hit the ground running. So essentially, when you help them, you'll be helping us. So go support that brand. Neighborly, ran by our sisters. Robin Beck and Carmel Kendall join me to give me those sisters a warm narrative podcast round of applause for their greeting card brand neighborly. All right, next section up next on the narrative podcast. This section is called the spotlight section. In this section, what I'm doing is I'm spotlighting uh, people, figures in, within our community, the original people community, for, you know, this is basically a section called all heroes don't wear capes type section where I'm... Um, you know, giving somebody in within our community their roses while they're here for, you know, impacting our community in a positive way. Now, primarily the reason why I do this section is because, unfortunately, we use our platforms, and by our, I mean original platforms, we've been programmed and conditioned to use our platforms in a negative way 
against each other. And so what I want to do is, you know, what, what the entire narrative podcast is about is uplifting and edifying our people. So I want to take that same energy with this section and uplift and edify by, you know, giving positive reinforcement to somebody out there that's doing something positive, utilizing their, you know, platform in a positive way, impacting and uplifting our people through, you know, um, activism or advocating for something, using their voice in a positive way, using their image and their likeness in a positive way. And the people who I usually spotlight in the spotlight section is a lot in the entertainment industry, such as actors, actresses, um, you know, recording artists, comedians, uh, public figures, um, YouTubers, TikTokers, um, basically anybody with a, a polarizing public platform. Um, in addition to that, they do some type of outreach, some type of giving back, you know, um, some type of activism, something, something positive. Um, I've also highlighted religious figures as well. I moved away from all that because I try, I'm trying to like these days highlight quote unquote normal people. Um, just to prove that we can do things with with ourselves other than just be entertainers, because I don't want to, you know, reinforce the negative stereotype that all we know how to do is entertain. So that's why I kind of chilled out on spotlighting um, people from the entertainment industry. But I might start going back to that because a lot of our brothers and sisters are getting, you know, a bum rap because they always want to show them in handcuffs. I always want to uh, tell their business as far as like, you know, a rumor, a scandal, something bad, something negative. But anyway, what this section is all about is just, you know, saluting somebody for noble efforts, um, advancing us as a people, um, using their platform for uh, positivity over negativity. Because, like I said, we've been programmed and conditioned to drag each other through the mud, air out dirty laundry, um, trade insults and take jabs at each other online. And unfortunately, we are the only people that do that. Nobody else does that but us. We've been programmed and conditioned to do that because we think like that's the only way to uh, garner hits and views. And to make money online is to... uh, you know, be disrespectful towards one another. And I'm just, you know, started this section to just show that you can say something nice about your brother or sister online and still, you know, get some traction for whatever project you got going on and, you know, reap the benefits in a positive way. And I know for a fact that it has caught on. Because before I added a spotlight section to my pack podcast, the narrative podcast, nobody, n- n- nobody was spotlighting anybody. Now, every time you go on another podcast, a show, a talk show, or whatever, they're always saying. Today, the spotlight will be spotlighting this person, that person. Nobody was doing that before I had a spotlight section of my podcast, the narrative podcast. So I had to, you know, take time to tip my hat to myself. Listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. All right. So I try to switch up every uh, week as well on the Narrative Podcast. When I do my highlight section, one week it'll be a male, one week it'll be a female. I believe I did a male last week. 
for my full broadcast of the narrative podcast. I might be mistaken, but anyway, if I did, I'll make up for it. Um, I kind of forgot to review my uh, last full episode. I usually review my last full episode before making a, a new episode, but I didn't do that this week. So I think, I'm crossing my fingers that I did a, a mail last week to keep the continuity flowing. But um, anyway, this week I'll be spotlighting a sister by the name of Afrocentric, a.k.a. Trinity Miracle. So Trinity is a spoken word artist, poet, um, organizer, um, and healer, herbalist healer, and then emotional healing as well. Uh, She uses her gift of poetry to talk about, you know, social issues. She got all kinds of workshops. Um, She does rallies and, um, you know, try to get people to vote, uh, speak out against, you know, when something's not going on, something that's not okay going on within our community or the world. Um, She's like barely in her 20s. But she's already, you know, being the game changer, being an activist, an outspoken advocate for a wide array of topics. Um, Now, to this community, I love my brothers and sisters in this community, but she's an advocate for that as well. And by that community, I mean like the elemental P community. I say the elemental P. So... Because I don't want to hit, you know, no weird, no flags or anything. But, you know, you're not pushing that here on this platform. That's the only thing I, I'm not in agreement with. But all our other stuff is cool. Um, not that I'm against that. You can love whoever you want to love in life. Be with whoever you want to be with. But, you know, as original people, you know, that was not of our nature, not who we are. The essence of our being. This is something we kind of picked up along the way by being around other people. So I just want to make that very crystal clear distinction. She is of that community and we still love her anyway. We still love all our brothers and sisters in that community. But um, nevertheless, this... um, Young sister is a breath of fresh air. She's positive. She's innovative. Um, You know, her art form is just like you got to go check out her YouTube channel. Just type it in the browser. uh, Trinity Miracle or Afrocentric and all her work will pop up on YouTube. Um, She got some really exhilarating pieces. um, Really stirs us so. So from one poet to another, I'm tipping my hat. Um. Yeah, super dope. And, you know, really advocating and uh, all about progression and all about change. And, you know, you can't knock that. So this week's spotlight on the Narrative Podcast goes to our sister Afrocentric, a.k.a. Trinity Miracle. Let's uh, give a warm narrative podcast round of applause for that sister and all she's doing right now currently. Oh, yeah, and check her out at at AfroJustice.com. She also speaks on voting rights. All right, next section of the Narrative Podcast. This section is called the Health and Wellness section. In this section, what I'm doing... It's just it's self-explanatory. It is what it sounds like. It's I'm going to be talking about health and wellness tips. I'm giving health and wellness tips to improve your overall health and wellness. Um, so here's the disclaimer. Um, the narrative podcast is meant for anybody to listen to. 
No matter, you know, if you're a man, woman, you know, ethnic background, whatever, you can, you're more than free to listen to my content. But just know that all my content is directed at my people, is my target audience, original people. Um, especially in this section, the health and wellness section, because, you know, we have a unique, um, internal composition. There are just certain things within our uh, diet that we can't have um, mentally, things that trigger us culturally, and, you know, this is ways to just improve our overall health, and the reason I feel we need to improve our overall health, original people, is because our people is under attack. We're under attack mentally, we're under attack physically, and spiritually, and in the health and wellness section of the narrative podcast, what I'm doing is I'm giving tips to my people to armor up mentally, physically, and spiritually. So the types of tips you usually hear um, in the narrative podcast section, health and wellness section is tips. Say like on the physical side of it, I usually give you the health benefit of a, a Vegetable, fruit, plant, herb, or extract that you can ingest or apply topically to improve your health or some type of physical exercise you can do to stay in um, good health. Um, On the mental side of it, mental things you can do to keep your mind strong because a good portion of your health comes from your mind state. As a matter of fact, this is why they call illnesses this eases because the the not feeling well is a result of the mind being at this ease get it so on the mental side of it i'll teach you something along the lines of or share with you not teach you because i'm not a teacher i'm just giving health and wellness tips um like the importance of meditation, mindful breathing techniques, uh, things to uh, strengthen your mind, your thought process, um, things to, you know, keep you calm and not be, not succumb to anxiety and just things to, you know, strengthen your um your mind, strengthen your mind, your thinking uh, capacity, um, all the uh, functions of the mind. That's the type of uh, health and wellness tips I give you on the mental side of it, on the spiritual side of it. You know, of course, praying, fasting, meditating, um, and other spiritual practices you can do to guard your spirit against spiritual attacks because there definitely is spiritual attacks being waged on our people, on all fronts. And so, like, that's what I teach you, how to recognize spiritual attacks and how to, you know, protect yourself spiritually. Um, And other things uh, in the health and wellness section that I throw throw a curveball in, I talk about divine law, quantum law, um, law of attraction, um, esoteric type things, things of that nature. But um, basically, it's just health and wellness tips. Just to, uh, you know, promote a healthy, free, healthy, fit, active lifestyle. Um, We're also being attacked, you know, financially as well, but I believe health is wealth. So the health and wellness tips that definitely help you with that. Check, check. Okay, yep. Yeah. All right. So today I'm actually going to kind of shake the foundation up. I'm going to tell you about the dangers of something, not a health benefit. So I'll be um, telling you about, you know, the dangers of something rather than the benefits of something. Um So today's health and wellness tip is the dangers of red dye 
of yellow, uh, the, the dye yellow five. Tetrazine, E one O two. Um, it's common in cereal, pop, gelatin, spices, yogurt, juice, um, over the counter meds, cosmetics, toothpaste, shampoo, detergents. Now, when it's in your system, this could lead to, you know, hyperactivity. And the hyperactivity is your, you know, your ADD and your ADHD. It also triggers seasonal allergies. So if you suffer from environmental allergies, like you sneeze profusely, you, get the, uh, you know, the runny nose, the stuffy nose, this is a result of probably you've been exposed to the yellow five and you just don't even know it because you was probably getting it from like your toothpaste or your, you know, your shampoo or your detergent. They also have cancer causing properties. They've been studies have linked them to several different kinds of cancer, uh, colon cancer, breast cancer, um, liver, or uh, not liver, um, pancreatic cancer. So it's really dangerous. Um, like, look at your uh, some a condom, a uh, common condiment that everybody loves. Your mustard. So if it's not organic mustard, you lo- you gotta look back. You know, on the back of the ingredient list to see what they use to make that mustard yellow. If it's yellow five, it's a no go. It is absolutely horrible for you. So yellow five, anything with the yellow five is in it is it no go. Start being, you know, diligent when you're uh, purchasing grocery food items, when you go into the store, whether it's food, whether it's uh, pantry, whether it's cosmetics, read them labels, look for the yellow five. If it contains yellow five, don't do it. It's banned in like, you know, every other country except this one. So, you know, last word, yellow dye, no go, stay away from it. And we're on to our next section of the narrative podcast, which is a speaking point section. And in this section, what I'm doing is I'm addressing uh, <clears throat> current topics of the day. And the current topics of the day kind of hail from, you know, whatever is happening, transpiring on in the world, um, whatever is happening, you know, globally or with something stuff that's happening specifically within our community. And the purpose of me doing this is to control the narrative, because like I said earlier, the media go out of its way to have us looking and sounding 10 types of crazy. So what we want to do is we want to, you know, control the narrative and um, just unpack whatever's going on in the world or in our community from our perspective, because the media uh, try to just, you know, have us looking and sounding like nuts, like, you know what I mean? So anyway, I got a few topics, nothing super duper hardcore to dive in. I'm not going to do any deep dives this week. It's been kind of light out here in the streets, but just, you know, some things I want to touch on. Um, This is kind of a remix topic. So, you know, we just got through celebrating um, Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving. We're gearing up for Christmas. Uh, and then after Christmas is going to be Easter. That's just here in the States. But um, basically, my first point is indoctrination. We got to, as a people, stop celebrating these greeting card holidays. And when you bring it up, it's usually like, oh, you're a wet blanket. You just trying to just be a downer and Nah, it's deeper than that. Understand, like, 
were the ones that came over here on boats, slave boats. You know, this is, we got indoctrinated into their, their way of doing and, you know, looking at life. And then for the ones already here, who was also put on plantation, so we got double screwed because we didn't get the reservation money and we got put on plantations. But that's another topic for another day. But, you know, we got indoctrinated into believing their thoughts, their viewpoints, their perspectives, and their thought viewpoints, their perspectives, perspective, excuse me, is harmful to us, is lethal to us. This is bad for our spirits. This is bad for our psyches. We sitting up there celebrating and give reference to the lifestyle of the oppressor. And, you know, if you call yourself a Christian, you have no business celebrating Christmas. You have no business with a tree and ornaments and, you know, doing all these pagan things. That's if you call yourself a Christian. You have no business doing that. Because it has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. They say, that, like in the word it says, don't nobody know when, if Jesus ever existed, it, like in that, in that year. This is off the Gregorian calendar. These is like, man, I'm telling you, it's super deep. It's onion layers deep with this that we're just subconsciously and unawaringly uh, being unaware of what we're celebrating, what we're speaking over ourselves, engaging in these rituals that we've been indoctrinated into. And then it's a generational curse because it's also finances. Because what are we doing right now? We spending money. We're spending millions and millions of dollars right now. Because it was just Black Friday. Now we're gearing up for Cyber Monday. And then wondering why things is the way they are within our communities. This is money we can make our communities whole with. we sitting up there giving it away to people that don't like us. They don't want us to flourish and uh, live prosperous. Buying things we don't even need. Because we've been indoctrinated and told to participate in this, these, you know, rituals. It's not traditions, it's a ritual. What else is a ritual? Blood sacrifices are rituals. So we got to like really take it down. To co- so my final point I want to make about that, we got to take it down a notch on participating in rituals as a people. Um, Next thing I want to touch on, um, bricks. It's getting real out there in them financial streets. They say one unit of brick is equivalent to 55 U.S. dollars. And bricks is looking within the next nine months to become the next universal um, mode of currency. Now, I said what I said. I stand on what I said. I don't think U.S. has, like, I think there's a lot of propaganda behind is the United States is going to tank and go under when BRICS comes in the full circle. So whether you want to believe this or not, America has already prepared for this contingency. This is the birthplace of the CIA. This is the birthplace of the FBI. Those organizations, they do intel. They've got black ops. They sit up there. They collect data. We got drones. You think America didn't have a contingency plan ready for bricks? We got a contingency plan ready for bricks. Um, They're using the media to like really fear monger us. I believe 
We are, when it goes into full, full effect, when it goes into full swing, we're going to feel the effects of that, you know, economically, a lot of this. And as we know, the first people that's going to panic, they're not going to be original people. They're going to be privileged people. I'm not picking on Caucasian people, but like white people are going to lose their ish when bricks go into full effect. They're going to be like, oh my God, this paper money can't buy anything. Like, our people, we're already, you know, we ain't going to trip. But we're going to definitely see some lows. We're going to definitely see, you know, an uprising behind the changing of the currency. So, like, the stock market's going to drop. It's going to, like, borderline crash. Um, you know, there's going to be some fighting. Going to, there's going to be a lot of discontent within this country when it happens. But it's not going to be for a super duper long period. I would say nine months max. With the insanity, with people losing their mind and losing their cool and losing their composure over it. But after it goes into full swing, the U.S.'s contingency plan is going to go into effect to calm everything down, to keep stuff from getting burnt down and people from losing their composure. But, um, yeah, so BRICS is definitely, definitely right around the corner in the wings waiting to happen but you know as far as america going down the twos because of it nah that's not really going to happen they're not going to let that happen so next subject matter i want to touch on is our sister cardi b um she says she's not endorsing the next president. She's gone on her social media, which is something she does and tells you, you know, she came across some information that, you know, this ain't getting funded, that ain't getting funded. And while I commend my sister for, you know, using her platform to do that, she's not really sharing information that's not known to the people like it's common this is politics politicians lie this is how democracy works you see it doesn't matter the political affiliation it doesn't matter if they're a democrat it doesn't matter if they're a republican it doesn't matter if they're an independent party it doesn't matter if the next president of the united states is of grassroots. I don't think we ever had a grassroots, have we? But it don't matter, their political affiliation. It's already contrived. Like the Senate and Congress, they already put all these plans in motion. It's already done up, and all the president's doing is just selling the public, us, the normal people, what they're already rolling out. You know, this is what all these shutdowns about. Because they're trying to get the best deal for them, not for us, for them. So, like I said, I commend my sister for um, sharing the information, but it's not no new information. So she ain't really sharing nothing that we didn't already know anyway. But, um, yeah, that's how these wicked beasts do. And, you know, it is what it is and it was what it was. All right. So, <clears throat> this section... Next section of the narrative podcast is called my final word of the day. And my final word of the day is just the final thoughts, a wise word of wisdom, um, something philosophical, something to 
invoke thought, a wise word of wisdom, a pearl, a gem, a wit, whatever you want to call it. Just something to resonate on your mind. And I kind of flip back and forth week to week. Sometimes it's final thought, sometimes it's final word. And the final thought is usually a phrase. The final word is a word. Today is a final thought because it's a phrase. And final word of the day here on the Narrative Podcast is be the bridge. And what do I mean by that? So the purpose of a bridge is to get you from one destination to another. One point of origin to another. And in life, what we, we're doing, we're always looking for a bridge. Or as we say in our community, the plug. So what I mean, bridge the gap. Sometimes you can't go in search of bridging the gap. You have to be the bridge to bridge the gap. To bring about change. To, you know, bring things together. To bring things into your world, to your circumference. And that's what I mean by be the bridge. So whatever you're looking for in life, sometimes you have to be the bridge. You got to bridge it over to you. Well, that's it and that's all. Thank you all for listening to another full episode of the Narrative Podcast. Make sure you download this episode and all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast. Um, I broadcast one time a week during the weekday. I never know what days that's going to be. There are super duper random lives. So you can check me out wherever you get your broadcast information from. You can go follow me on YouTube or X is now known formerly Twitter. And you will never miss the live episode of the narrative podcast. But uh, definitely remember to download this episode and our previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast. But if you follow me on YouTube or X, you will never miss me when I'm live because this um, platform broadcasts directly to each of those. And then um, next, I wrote a book of poetry called um, The Black Card. The Black Card is available on Poetizer.com. Um, now what you want to do is go head over to uh, Poetizer.com. They got a virtual bookstore on Poetizer.com. Purchase my copy of The Black Card written by me, Halsey Allen. Black Card is a 30-page uh, book of poetry. It chronicles the, our entire existence as a people, um, all our experiences, positive and negative, uh, purchase the black card today or get your black card revoked. And then lastly, before I leave you out of here, I write poetry. I have my own personal poetry blog on blogger.com. Um, it's a combination of spontaneous in the moment poetry. I just write it in the moment. I post like every other, like whenever I get a chance to. I used to do it every single day, but I've been lax. I'm going to start posting regularly again, but um, it's on blogger.com. The address is www.mrhawsesblogs.com. My tagline is poetry with a passion. Poetry from all occasions. When you read it, you'll find out why, because even though I spontaneously write the poetry, um, the uh, subject matter is very like detailed and vivid. You would think that I, uh, you know, sit up here and thought, but no, nah, that's just all kinetic. It comes to me. I write it as I come. Yet as it comes to me, I don't contemplate the title or anything. But um, if you like poetry or are looking to get into poetry, definitely check that out. It's called Hodges Poetry Corner on www.mrhodgesblogs.com on uh, blogger.com. And the way you can support it is by sharing the either 
The link to Halsey's Poetry Corner or a poem featured on Halsey's Poetry Corner on all platforms, whatever platform you occupy. Um, yeah. And then, um, as always, you can message me at Passion Webmail, Poetic Passion dot host. Um, that's pretty much all I got going on. Um, I'm Halsey Allen. I'm changing the narrative one episode at a time. I'm asking you to join my cause by becoming a narrator and change the narrative on your end one social media post at a time. Until next time, Harsey Allen in the, po- in the uh, narrative podcast signing off. And it's like that. is changing the narrative one episode at a time.